What's going on, y'all? Now, I don't promote agendas of such when it comes to what I'm about to speak on. I promote patterns, pretty much. Meaning that I'm not coming across as I'm pro anything. I look at the patterns of a lot of situations. Hence, the whole situation with this, um, how can we say, Martin Scorsese saying that Marvel Cinematic Movies are not cinema. And I get it. I get where he's coming from. It's been a deep-seated hatred that's been going on because superhero movies, preferably Marvel because Marvel has the more popular ones at them this time and history that they got the most popular, very popular superhero films. I mean, Avengers Endgame is the biggest movie of all time at this moment. I get where the disdain comes from, especially to a decorated filmmaker as himself. So this is not a bash on Scorsese. Not at all. Okay? What I don't understand is how can you twist words and manipulate words to fit your agenda? But then again, people gravitate into this whole situation and taking his words as the gospel and saying, yes, yeah, see, see, this is what I'm talking about is the ever silent DC fanboys. DC fanboys like cherry picking things that are anti-MCU. Peep peep game to that. They cherry pick a lot of things that are anti-MCU. Like initially there was a report and and a lot of them take it out of context that Ruffalo and Hemsworth thought Ragnarok ruined their character but then you look deeper into it it's initially upon how can we say first viewing but then again we get it it's a vocal minority it's a very vocal minority and Ragnarok went on to be on um, the most popular solo Thor film and it set a mood and reinvigorated a character you know, it was a more funnier film than any other Thor movie ever been. Like, that kind of caught me off guard initially when I saw the trailer. But then again, I was like, you know what? When Psycho Watiti said, yes, it's a comedy. I was like, okay, if they going for an intentional comedy, let's see what it do. Let's see if it sucks or not. Because it's all about saying where you want to go with something And then the execution sucks donkey balls. Okay? And I turned out I liked the film. I I thought it was funny. It pretty much put the character into a new direction, basically. And then used humor. And humor became a coping mechanism. Like Tony Stark's snarkiness and his sarcasm became a coping mechanism initially with him. Before he evolved even more and more into a more... um, more well-rounded character and that man that would make that ultimate sacrifice which he would have never done when we first saw him in Iron Man 1 or would he have done because remember he told Pepper to blow the generator which could have killed him remember that so that man has always been there but it's it made him a more it made it a more, how can I say, enhanced that this fate of the world, the universe itself, you know? In Iron Man, he was trying to stop his company, his father's legacy, his legacy from being tainted by Obadiah Stain. Okay, all right? But yeah, back on subject here. You notice there's always a pattern. And I understand what Scorsese said. He's not the first person to say it. This is why I'm not outraged about what he said. I just find it, it's a, it's hating. It's honestly hating. 
I'm sorry if these critically acclaimed films don't put asses in the box office. They don't. As much as a film, people want to go, they want to see a film and they want to have fun. Some people don't like to go to movie theaters and watch something that's a serious drama. They will wait for that to come out on digital or they will wait for that to come out on hard copy and watch it there. Okay? I could tell you now, after viewing Joker, I was like, okay, I don't want to go back to the movie theater and see that. I was like, you know what? I will see that when I get when it comes out on home theater again. And then I would notice things that I haven't noticed before. I, I'm, it's not that type of film. It, like a drama like that, I don't go to movie theaters to see drama. That's just me. And I know a lot of people may think like this too. And they may think opposed to it. But who goes to a movie theater to watch a drama by themselves unless you're a movie critic? I was like, wow, I can't really wait to go see um, so-and-so and 12 Years to Slave. And I'm like, I don't want to see this in a movie theater. I'm sorry, that's not what I go to see movies for. Maybe couples do, like elderly couples and couples like in their 50s and up. But shit, what young person, which is a large demographic, wants to go see Flight? I remember, so I went to see Flight on a date. And my girlfriend at the time only wanted to see it because it had fucking Denzel Walsh attended it. Man, what a waste of ticket. You know why? Not that the movie was terrible. It's just that the movie, it, it, it was like, this man was already in a spiral, okay? He was on alcohol. He was on drugs. He was separated from his wife. His son didn't respect him. And this man just kept doing the same shit repeatedly, repeatedly. And even the drug addict white female that he was with, she, even she clinked her life up and she had to leave him because he would not change. I was like, wow, this is really depressing cinema to be watching a movie theater with a date. With a date. Exactly my point. Did I say it was a trash movie? No, I would not watch that on a movie date. So I'm sorry, Martin Scorsese, if people don't want to watch a lot of, they don't want to watch Andrew Garfield back in um, whatever times in Japan. Nobody want to watch him as a missionary like that. I ain't saying it's a bad movie. I'm saying it's something that a lot of people don't want to sit their asses down to watch. But if they hear, they go, oh, wow, it's really getting good reviews. I want to see this movie. I'm going to wait for it to come out on, on home release. Or order it when it comes through on the cable. That's where these movies come from. And they're not making the money. So I understand where the frustration from people like Scorsese come from. Jodie Foster, too. She was another one who threw her hate into it. Um, that thing. And I'm like, you know what? Jodie, st just stop. Just stop it, Miss Foster. Stop it and just go put it on your drawers with dick holes and just, just be. Okay? We get it, all right? It's not in your range of what you want to do, but it's popular. It funds these smaller movies that you guys love to do. Think about it. They make it so much money. They be like, okay, well, here, here's the, we got some, we got more than a surplus in the um, cap. Here, we can fund this movie for you and we can turn a big pro. we can turn a small profit out of, you know, we can use our surplus money to make even more profit on top of that surplus money. It's small, but it's gains, it's gains, it's gains. It keeps them in black, okay? And not in the red like Sony is right now, okay? So Jodie Foster was another one who threw her hate into um, for these movies. And then Jennifer Aniston, Miss Box Office Poison herself, had to recently start talking about... Um, how she doesn't like these movies. I'm like, you you are box office poison. Katherine Heigl retired and she passed the mantle to you. She passed the mantle to you, Jennifer Aniston. 
okay? And you know she really had to say something about Marvel movies when she found out that Angelina Jolie has been cast in the Eternals. You think this shit ain't intentional? Please, it is. Because she had a long time to say something and she didn't until Angelina Jolie got cast in the Eternals, okay? Like, even Michael Douglas was like, you know what, it wasn't his style of movies, but when they got him in, he had fun. He had so much fun that he gladly came back to do Ant-Man and the Wasp, okay? They even got Michelle Pfeiffer just for to be in that movie for less than 30 minutes. She was in that movie for a screen time of how much? Not long. She And then she appeared in Endgame also at Tony Stark's funeral. Even Michelle Pfeiffer, they even got her onto it. And they almost got Sharon Stone too. Okay? They got Jeff Bridges initially. He kicked off MCU as the first villain. Jeff Bridges. The big Lebowski himself. Who Thor would later emulate as bro Thor. But you know, you get what I'm saying. They got him. They get it, all these people and I mean, look, Robert Downey Jr., that series saved his life. Basically, you know, Iron Man saved his life. It did because he was in a downward sp spiral. He came out of rehab, got into Iron Man, just became very successful. And it has set him on the path. He got Sherlock Holmes from that on the side. He did Tropic Thunder on the side and between Iron Man 1 and 2. And he was having fun with the hell. Even Todd Phillips, the director of Joker, got him to do um, Due Date. Which was a really underrated comedy. People even complained about him. Oh God, his character was mean and that. I found that shit hilarious when he punched that kid in the gut. That, that, that kid was annoying. And you knew that's where it was going to go. Something was going to happen. That shit had me rolling. And his, just, his, his reaction. And like to, um, he said, all right, you all right there, pop up? After he hit him in the gut. And then the little girl, his, the sister was looking. And then when the, the, the mom came at Juliet Lewis, who played the mother, came back in the room, she was like, everything okay? Everything all right? What's wrong? She was like, nothing. And he was like, yeah, nothing is right. Like, he was looking at her like, yeah, go ahead and say something. I dare you to. <laughs> and, it, and Todd Phillips walked away from that because he want to blame the fact that we're in a woke culture. And you know how I feel about woke being misrepresented misrepresented whatever the way to say is being misrepresented misrepresented I'm sorry by the anti-SJWs and the white nationalists of course because you know anti-SJW is just basically um, why these movies ain't as white as they used to be you know the whole thing about those movies are basically that whole gesture anti-SJW has become, okay, let's put it into these annoying ass SJW banter, but now it's now they are the annoying ones. So when I hear woke and I hear Todd Phillips say, because of woke culture, he can't do comedies like he did anymore. And I'm like, I'm like, please, please. But my thing about Joker recently is that he said it is a serious film in the guise of a comic. And that's been my problem. This is the reason why I thought The Dark Knight was overrated as a superhero film. film. But as a film in general, it's a good crime drama. But as a Batman film, no, it's not a good Batman film. None of them were with the exception of Begins. Begins felt that was a Batman film, okay? But because it was successful and Batman and Robin and Batman Forever left a bad taste in Batman fans' mouth. Thank you, Joel Schumacher. You know, he apologized, but still, thank you, asshole. Anyway, when Begins came along, people were like, oh, well, okay. It didn't make as much money as it should have made. But to me, it's my favorite Batman movie of the Nolan series. But this whole thing about having to deviate from source material to be a hit didn't work well with me. And don't say 
it did. Like it's a, it should have. It did this. It did that. Blah blah blah. And this is what you want from your superhero movies. Now only DC fanboys say shit like that because they harbor on to they hang on to any success DC has because they've been bombing hard, with the exception of Wonder Woman. Uh, what's that? Um, Aquaman, of course. And now Joker. Joker is going to do well. Joker is going to break a billion. I don't give a damn what anybody say. You, it's on its way. It's going to break a billion. Okay? R-rated movie based on a Batman villain is going to break a billion. It, if it don't, I'll be shocked. What it's doing worldwide right now, it should. You know, if the foreign market holds strong and keep going, it's going to break a billion. Okay, but my thing is, initially, initially, I thought it deviated away from what it, you know, the character. But then you know, as you watch Joker and you see it unravel and it pulls away the character and it pulls away the identity that never really belonged to him, and you realize, okay, now this is the Joker who doesn't have that origin because he shunned it for a reason because it was never truly his. With Joker, okay? It was never truly his. And you start to see the birth of this character and the birth of Batman, too. And this is was like, this to me was like, okay, now I see what it's talking about. But as for the character, like evolution into a villain and what it meant on the ramifications of. The beginning of Batman and all this. I, I see it really did that. It, it won me over. No lie about it. Okay. I get it. Is it a super groundbreaking film? No. Was Woe King Phoenix good in it? As is the same. Hell yeah. Yeah. All right. It's another Joker driven performance. Like Joker. Let's be honest. If Dark Knight didn't have Joker. And it had some lame ass villain. Played by, I don't know, but this is Joker, and Heath Ledger brought he he brought that he, that move that saved that movie for me. Let's say, um, the um the Dark Knight was about facing the Riddler. It, that might have worked, given Nolan and Momento and and Somnac. I don't like what he did. That might have worked, but that's what if. But you know what didn't work. And The Dark Knight, Batman. It didn't for me. Like, he, the people that, oh, you gotta understand, this is like, he took a back seat. No, no, no. For a character like the Joker, who didn't have much of an origin story, he just was really charismatic. Ledger was really charismatic with his portrayal. And that chewed up the screen time because you wanted to see when he came on. Okay? But... For Batman, we needed to know more about Batman, like when it comes to the effect of being a superhero. No, he was pining over Maggie Gyllenhaal's, um, <sighs> no, you got her to replace Katie Holmes. You got Maggie Gyllenhaal to be Rachel Dawes in place of. Katie Holmes it just wasn't working for me it just didn't I'm like really I'm like so Dent and Bruce are two no standards motherfuckers out here because really I'm like is the wall undefeated or what because between Batman Begins and the Dark Knight the wall hit Rachel Dawes and Katie Holmes ended, look, ended up looking like Maggie Gyllenhaal Anyway, I wanted Batman to be more, to show more of the complexities and more of the mental toll on him that um, it was taken being Batman. And people are like, well, it did show that. It did. I'm like, really? It did? Really? Did it? You know? And then the third movie... Oh, God, don't get me started. You know I hate Dark Knight Rises with a passion. 
I think that's why when you hate something, you don't forget it. This is my problem. You know? Like the inconsistencies with it. Oh, but oh my God, the Nolan Sir Dark Knight Rises was a good finale. Okay, explain to me this then. Why the fuck was Bane in better condition, look younger and stronger than Bruce when he was older than Bruce and Tal Yao Go? Okay? And don't and don't say don't say what I think you're gonna say. That he kept himself in great shape. No, 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 no. And let's skip, let's not skip the fact that Bane, a grown man, fell in love with a little girl with a shaved head. And all those little, all those men in that pit wanted to rape that little girl and he helped to get free. And they damn near beat him to death for it because he let some young, green, you know what I'm about to say, choach, get out of their grasp. But then again, when Bruce gets thrown down in that pit and they fix his back and he does nothing but fucking push-ups to get back in shape, I'm like, are you serious? This man, Spawn got knocked out of place. He lost in a straight-up hand-to-hand combat, and he's not practicing the guitar. He's doing push-ups. Fuck out of here, yo. And then, when they met off in the street, and they ran like Bane's men, and the Gotham City Police Department ran at each other with guns out. This isn't Braveheart where you had clubs and swords where... And arrows where you can run. If you run fast enough, you can dodge some of the arrows and get through that. No, this is gunfire. This is straight on. Like, it, that showdown was stupid. It was so fucking stupid. Okay? Anyway, there was a part where after um, Talia revealed who she was and she got in the vehicle and she had the vehicle fire and kill Matthew Modine's character. I forgot the lieutenant. I think he, his name. I forgot his name. Anyway... It cut to Matthew Modine just laying there, being shot with a high caliber weapon, but no blood. I'm like, this is the, this is stupid. It looked the the yo the second unit on Nolan Batman movies when it comes to action are terrible. They don't do action good. They do not do action good. And don't at me on that bullshit. They do not do action good. So the rise is just was stupid. Anyway, it, it, I, I'm sorry. This man was walking around hobbling, had no cartilage in his knee, and then all of a sudden he got the itch to be Batman again. He, no, no, he was not ready, like Kevin Hart said. Guy's ass beat. And the thing is, Catwoman let that shit happen. She just backed off. She set him up, and then he still gravitates to that. And there's no chemistry, okay? There's no chemistry. And that was a waste of Anne Hathaway. I'm sorry. It was a waste of Anne Hathaway. It, it really was. Oh, and the movie was too cool to call her Catwoman. Okay? And it was too cool to call... Um, they wanted, they, What they do at the end with Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character? You know? I would like, you know... His name was John Blake. So when he went to pick up what Bruce left him after Bruce quote-unquote died... Um, they was like, oh, you know, I'm here, I'm John Blake. And then he was like, you got ID? And then he was like, yeah. And she's like, you should use your first name. I like it. Robin. I was like, motherfucker. I was like, are you fucking kidding? I was in the movie theater like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? And then the, the, even the way he knew, even the way he knew he was Batman. He was like, I could just see that same look. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck? A, a look? Really, Nolan? Like, you really, really don't didn't want to do another movie. He really didn't. He phoned this one in. Big time. You know, between Bane showing his boobs, his 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 moves and stuff. Because, you know, Tom Hardy couldn't gain as much weight. He's only, Tom Hardy's a small guy. Statue-wise, and he had to gain his weight and wear lifts to be big and shit. I was like, nah, okay. 
And then that voice. I'm sorry. I, I, I This whole thing started off as talking about Scorsese. And I understand where the hate come from. But look, nobody wants to watch those movies. But then they went into The Dark Knight Rises. And it went into Joker. I'm like, you know what? I'm sorry. Give me Joker any day. Give me Joker film any day over Dark Knight Rises. And, it only, and I don't even care. And I even forgive the fact that it doesn't have Batman in it. Because it was a great performance. You knew it was predictable where he was going to go because it's the Joker. But you start to reference a lot of things and realize, you know, Joker is a master manipulator. He only tells a certain side of the story. He showed things. You only see stuff from his perspective. You see things and wishful thinking and stuff. And you have to watch it multiple times to figure out what's real and what's not. And you might take things differently and you want to see the symbolism and Easter eggs from, you know, for the Gotham universe. So I, I, I think I thought Joker was good. OK, but in the end, to the, the bring this all back full circle, I find it very, very funny when DC fanboys are the most anti-Marvel when a hit DC movie comes out. Because what happened when Shazam came out? After talking about how it's the real Captain Marvel, fuck Brie Larson, all this stuff. What what happened? What happened? Crickets. Fucking crickets. 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 And don't even try to say, oh, well, it still turned a profit. I know it flopped at the movie theater, but it made a small profit. No, no, no. Okay. Look at Joker. Joker cost fifty-five million dollars to make, and it quite possibly was going to go to a billion. Okay. All right. And people were like, "Oh well, nobody really knows Shazam." That don't mean nothing. If it was good enough for parents to bring their kids back and watch again and again and again, they would. But even though I like the film, I'm gonna be honest with you: the film. Had a lot of scenes that were disturbing. You don't want to watch. You don't want your kids to watch that. When all the the the, the seven deadly sins came out of Doctor Savannah, murdered Doctor Savannah's brother. He killed his own brother and his father, and murdered everybody in the executive room. But it's a but it's a lighthearted comedy, um, superhero film. It's big meets Superman. But then disturbing shit like that was happening. Okay, look at Black Panther. PG-13, Killmonger had purpose. He had a reason. He felt wronged by Wakanda. And then on top of that, he felt he knew what his father was fighting for outside of Wakanda. Then, of course, his uncle, T'Chaka, killed his father. So there was a lot of, there was multi- multiple layers after that he did he went into the military he was getting his skills up became a mercenary a, a high level warrior he bred himself to be to finish his father's work and to take wakanda exactly was killmonger scaring kids no this kid's walking i seen kids dressed up as killmonger I don't see nobody dressed up as Dr. Savannah because they were too scared of him. Mark Strong gave a, a good performance. I'm glad they called him back after Green Lantern because I even thought he was good as Sinestro, but the movie sucked. Anyway, people were dressed as Killmonger. Hell, my friend is um, my friend is um, a biracial Hispanic dude. His mother, he's from Honduras, but his mother is blacker than I am. Basically, his mother is blacker than I am. And even he grew his hair and had it braided and dressed up as Killmonger. So the character had range. I don't see, I ain't see nobody at any Comic Con today walking around dressed as Dr. Savannah. Okay? That's my point. How it is, how you do villains. You can do villains that the, you know, the kids still like, but they're still villains. Okay? And the kids know they're the bad guys. You could do that. Nobody cared. The Dr. Zvonna was too 
fearsome of a villain. The two the, 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 that should have happened in a movie like how can I say a, a movie that was more geared towards um teenagers. That movie Shazam was geared towards smaller children. And then let's talk about the bullies in school that drove the SUV. Now you know Freddie Freeman has a dis he was born with a disability. And he uses the, the, the um the cane crutch and they hit him with the fucking truck. They hit him with their SUV. Like, I'm an EMT. That would have put somebody in a goddamn hospital. You could have, hip could have been broken, could have had a cracked femur, could have had severe bruising. I know it's a movie, but still, though, the subject matter, that right there, that hit right there. And you telling me, you telling me that that's a movie. That's, now you understand why it flopped. Because you can't take your kids to see a superhero movie, okay? It's going to flop, especially with a character like Shazam. See, Joker's different because Joker is a villain. Joker is a like a, a super, he's violent. They know that. A lot of the fans know. This is why the movie's going to do a slow creep to a million. Creep slow, and it's going to peak at over, I mean, a billion. It's going to do a slow creep to that, but it's going to make it there. Because Joker has history because of Batman, but it's rated R. People know what the, the parents will not bring their kids to see the Joker. The, all the adults are going to see that because it's rated properly. Whereas Shazam is a kid. You got these trailers and you show Shazam. Oh, I'm a kid. I'm doing the I'm doing the floor stance and stuff, and you know, I could do this and I could do that. And it didn't. The villain was like scary to the kids and then you had him beat up on them and then at the end I get it they all you know the adopted kids all of them became Max Mercury and all of, like you know I, I get it I get it but the villain was not that yeah there were scenes where parents were really disturbed about that and would not take their kids back to watch that look at Lost World Jurassic Park when those raptors were murdering people in that field and jumping and leaping at over them and stuff that scared children parents I remember watching that when I was younger like a teenager and parents were getting up and the kids were crying running them out the movie theater taking them to the bathroom okay but anyway, I've gone on way, way too long about that. In a nutshell, I just want people to know, look, I get where Scorsese comes from as a filmmaker. Even James Cameron was hating, but then he can't, he ain't in no place to hate because he made a movie, a CGI movie with blue people. Oh, that's serious film, right? That's serious cinema, you know? He just was hating because of the fact... Cameron was hating over the fact that he it's a dick measuring contest to um to him. Hell, it might even be a dick measuring contest to Martin Scorsese. Okay? But you cannot change what people want to see in movie theaters. And like I said, the movies that he make and directors like him make are movies that are for home viewing. They're good. But... A lot of people are like, I want to go to a movie theater to see that. I will wait for it to come home. And then I will do my analysis from there. You know, I hear it's good, but I'm in no rush to see that. I want to waste my money to see that. I want to see something that I leave the movie theater. And I'm like, yeah, they, wow, that was fun. It was so much action. Oh, I loved characters. It made me laugh. People want to see that in movie theaters today. Okay? Hell, me, I'm, I'm well-rounded. Like, as I'm intelligent, my intelligence and stuff, and my taste, I'm well-rounded. But you know what? I still would not waste my time going to see a thought-provoking drama in the um, theater. Because that's not a place to watch that. To me, it isn't. And I know a lot of people feel that way. And the box office shows such. But I digress. So, as usual, because I'm a fury, I'm here. And now I'm out. Peace.